chosen to use the Bible upon which Barack Obama will place his left hand, the same one used by Abraham Lincoln in 1861. Michelle Obama has been holding it all day in her mustard-colored overcoat. She is near the microphone now. Barack Obama with a smile is there. The girls, Malia, Ten, and Sasha, Seven. I, Barack Obama. I, Barack. Damn you, man. Hold on. The press office, the president of the United States. Sorry. And will to the best of my ability, will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God, so help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. The first handshake, Barack Obama is taking hands with John Roberts, the chief government. We almost missed it. I accidentally pushed. <laughs> well, I was trying to turn it up. <laughs> We sat here for an hour waiting on it and we almost missed it. Four minutes of battery. So we'll get the first part of the address. We just let this tape run out. I stand here today humbled by the task before us. Grateful for the trust you've bestowed. Mindful of the sacrifices borne by our ancestors. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. As well as for the generosity and cooperation he has shown throughout this transition. Forty-four Americans have now taken the presidential office. Words have been spoken during rising tides of prosperity, the still waters of peace. Yet, every so often, the oath is taken amidst gathering clouds, the raging storms. At these moments, America has carried on not simply because of the skill or vision of those in high office, but because we, the people, have remained faithful to the ideals of our forebears and true to our founding doctrine. So it has been, so it must be with this generation of Americans. But we are in the midst of crisis that is now well understood. Our nation is at war against the far-reaching network of violence and hatred. Our economy is badly weakened, a consequence of Greed and irresponsibility on the part of some, but also our collective failure to make for a new age. Homes have been lost, jobs shed, businesses shut. Our Sorry. care is too costly, our schools fail too many, and each day brings further evidence that the ways we use energy strengthen our adversaries and threaten our planet. These are the indicators of crisis. 
subject to data and statistics. Less measurable, but no less profound, is the sapping of confidence across our land. The nagging fear that America's decline is inevitable, that the next generation must lower its sights. Today, I say to you that the challenges we face are real. They are serious and they are many. They will not make, be met easily or in a short span of time. But know this, America, they will be met. On this day, we gather because we have chosen hope over fear. Unity of purpose over conflict and discord. On this day, we come to proclaim an end to the petty grievances and false promises, the recriminations and worn-out dogmas that for far too long have strangled our politics. We remain a young nation, but in the words of Scripture, the time has come to set aside childish things. The time has come to reaffirm our enduring spirit, to choose our better history, to carry forward that precious gift that no